G'day aspiring engineers. This is the fourth revised tutorial in the series of 16 basic tutorials in Fusion 360. So this one's a pretty simple one. Now you need to understand why I get you to repeat things that I've already taught you. You know that old saying, practice makes perfect? Well, that's only half the story. And at the end of this video, I'll tell you the other half. Now, the other thing I want to get through to you this time is the reason why we do nice, simple sketches. You know, we could make the sketches a little more complex, but there's a reason. We'll get into that too, but let's get started. Welcome to Future Engineering. The future starts now. The first thing to do is to turn on the visibility of the origin so that you can see it here in the middle of the screen. And of course you can turn that around and you can see the view cube up here change as we rotate the space. And of course, save your work before you start modeling and let's call this one part four and save it in 16 parts or whatever your folder is titled click on create sketch and choose the front plane and that's the one with the blue and the red axes and it will turn to face you if you've got your preferences set the way that i recommend i've got them in the pdf the free download so go ahead and get that if you haven't got it already now you might remember some of the keyboard shortcuts that we learned last time there's L for line, T for circle, R for rectangle, etc. Don't stress too much about that. I'll remind you of them over the next few videos and they'll begin to stick. So I'm going to press L, L for line, on the keyboard. And you see that the cursor turns into the sketch line and the button in the toolbar lights up. So you can see the drawing as we follow along. I'm just going to begin drawing by clicking once here, get a horizontal line going across to the left up a little bit and make sure that it's vertical. That's all we need to do. A horizontal one coming back a bit towards the right. Doesn't matter what size it is at this stage. You'll see why in a minute. So then we want a vertical line coming up. And oh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna escape out of that. I'm gonna control Z to go back one. I'm gonna hit the line tool again. And then this time I'll start there at that last point. I'm gonna go vertical, but before I click, I wanna show you how you get that curve coming out of a straight line. I'm just going to move the mouse slowly and then I'm going to press down with the left mouse button and that means that as I drag you can get this curve coming out of it. I'm just going to go over here somewhere. You'll get uh, really good at this eventually but I'm just going to take my finger off the left mouse button about there and then I'm going to mouse over the, the place where we began this sketch. Uh, you'll see that it snaps onto that point of origin and when I click, the line tool lets go and we've got our sort of a rough sketch. It doesn't look very much like that, but I did it on purpose. And the reason why I did that is because I want to show you how to push this thing into shape. You can see this constraints toolbar up here. Click on the horizontal vertical constraint and you'll be able to find that in the constraints toolbar and you just mouse along and read the tool tips that pop up as you mouse over them. It's the one at the far left of the constraints, horizontal, vertical. Click on that. And then you see this one that I made purposely out of vertical. Well, when you have the vertical constraint toolbar and click on that line, it popped into the vertical position. So that's pretty neat. Now, the only thing we want here is we want a tangent relationship between the curve and this straight vertical line now. So I'm gonna go for the, the tangent constraint and I'm gonna click once on the curve and once on the straight vertical line, and you see that the little tangent constraint symbol pops in right there at the place where those two lines meet. The next one I want is this one here, the coincident constraint. I click on that, you see that the cursor is loaded with the coincident constraint. I want the point of origin of that curve to be coincident with the point of origin of the document. So with the tool active, I click once on one of those points and then on the other point and they will jump together. The next one I want is the dimension tool. Now I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut for that one. D for dimension. Watch the cursor now and the cursor is now loaded with the dimension tool. So I'm going to click once on this uh, line at the bottom of the sketch and place it down here somewhere and you can see by the drawing that it should be 150. Press enter and that changes the sketch. There's this little short vertical line over here and looking at the drawing you can see that that's supposed to be 20 and then uh, the distance between the point of origin and the baseline is supposed to be 40 
press enter and it changes the sketch. Then what have we got here? Now you might think that we need to have a vertical constraint on this line, but we don't really. We've got a horizontal constraint on the line down below here. And then there are some perpendicular constraints on these corners and this corner, which means that it can only be vertical. I hope you can follow what I'm saying there. That's the way it is. We've done some linear dimensions with the dimension tool and watch this, it can even do a radius dimension. You click on that radius, place it out here, and you saw the R at the beginning of that thing before I clicked. The radius of this thing is 30, so we type in 30, press enter, and there's our sketch. Now, you might say, why don't we put the fillet here? There is, in fact, a fillet tool here. There's this sketch fillet tool, but there's a reason. And we could even put another circle in here, but I want to keep these sketches as simple as possible for several reasons. One, it gets you in the habit of doing a sketch feature workflow. Two, you'll get to distinguish between those features that are more properly part of the sketch or a three-dimensional feature of itself. But let's continue. Now that our sketch is complete and all of the lines in the sketch are nice and black instead of the blue color that they were at the beginning before we started putting dimensions and constraints on, it's time to extrude it. Now the way that we do that is we hit the E key, E for extrude. Then you get an isometric view of the sketch. You get this little blue arrow showing the direction. And here's the extrude dialog box ready to go. Got a little focused field here ready for the input from your keyboard. So type in the distance, which is 100 and click OK. We've got a fillet to do. And if you look in the toolbar above, you'll find modify and fillet. Notice that the blue focused field in the dialog box is asking you to select the edges and the faces where you want the fillet to be. Now we don't have to turn the model around. It'll highlight the edge that needs the fillet, even though it's out of sight. Click on that and type in the size of the fillet, which is a radius of four, as you can see from the drawing. And you can see the little fillet that has been applied. Click OK on the dialog box. The next thing we need to do is put a sketch on this front face of the part. So here's create sketch. And then you can mouse over these different faces on the model. All of them could have a sketch on them, but the one that we want to sketch on is this front face. Hit the C key on the keyboard so that you load the cursor with the circle tool. Click once on the point of origin, which is the center point of the circle. And uh, it doesn't really matter what size this is because we're going to use a dimensional constraint to drive it into shape. There it is, the dimension tool, or you could have hit D key for more dimension. And uh, click once on the circle, place the dimension outside, and type in 30 for the diameter. Uh, that's it for that sketch. So E for extrude. And you notice that we've got the extrude dialog box open. The profile that it's asking for is the one that we just drew. Notice that the little arrow is pointing the wrong way. And the operation here is set to new body. Uh, that won't help us. We want to have a cut and we need to change that by dragging it in a little bit. The direction is one side. The extent type is through all. And then, uh, as you can see, the red indicator showing the cut going right through the part. Click OK, and then use the orbit tool to move the model around a little bit so that you can see right through that hole and confirm that it's gone all the way through. You can see the little fillet that we put on here a minute ago. And that's it for the fourth part in the 16 basic tutorials. So I told you I'd tell you the other half of the story about practicing and the reason why we practice. Well, the thing is that when you're going through the step by step workflow and you do that a number of times on different models, what you're doing is you're training yourself and this is actually developing a skill. And that's what a skill is. It's a workflow that you practice often enough so that it becomes a part of you and it's the way that you work. And you can do it in one shape and then a different shape and then in an unfamiliar shape. It's very valuable. So I'll see you next time when we work on a different model, number five, while we're learning some new stuff. See you then.